There isn't much love out there for regions in the southeast. Most would prefer the quality of life offered by more fertile regions. But in Kenshi, opportunity awaits in the most difficult of places for those who have the grit and determination needed to press onward. And even though the regions we're about to discuss are no picnic, they are certainly manageable if the right preparations are made. Technically speaking, we're taking a closer look at three bordering regions which are south of Stobes Gamble, those being the Crags, the Pits, and the Pits East. Each of these regions has a similar climate and resources, so it's ideal to have them discussed all at once. To start, let's get into what kind of opposition you'll face in these territories. Truth be told, the spawns you'll find in these zones would frighten even the bravest samurai, with the spawn roster being composed of some of the most difficult factions in the game. Naturally, you'll encounter the Reavers due to their HQ being nearby in Stobes Garden, and while their armor is low-quality leather, their ranged weapons and combat abilities are not to be underestimated. If you happen to get captured by them, they'll turn you into a simp for the revolution, which is only a small step above working in the coal mines for Lady Sugi. You'll certainly see skeleton bandits during your travels as well. Although skeleton bandits won't ever launch a coordinated assault on your base, their wandering patrols pack quite a punch with combat values over 40 and decent armor to boot. Skeleton bandits ultimately lose out though to the crab raiders in terms of strength on account of the crab raiders having superior armor and crab companions. Crab raiders are far more sophisticated than other factions in Kenshi because they have several settlements of their own with shops including a crab town capital where they have set up a constitutional monarchy with the one true queen on the throne. Let it be a fair warning for all. If you do not ally with the crab raiders and you settle in one of these three regions, the difficulty is going to be significantly higher. Some other human factions you'll want to be on the lookout for will be the scavengers and the drifters. Now the scavengers, you may be familiar with them if you watched my Storm Gap Coast Guide, but the drifters are the odd one here, as many of the recruitable characters and bars will be from the drifters faction, and you're likely to have stumbled across individual drifters that have been wandering about the map. Yet surprisingly, the drifters who travel in the pits and the crags are hostile to you, and their combat values are quite high, all things considered. So they are yet another faction you have to be on the lookout for when you pass through these regions. In terms of animals, you might encounter black gorillas, crabs, or land bats. Compared to the humanoid spawns, these won't pose as much of a threat, but it's still worth noting. And you'll certainly want to keep in mind if you journey in the western part of these regions, you may even see sniper bots, which have traveled past the sniper valley into these zones. Now, I didn't notice any sniper bots when I lived here but the wiki says they're there, so I'm going to mention it, because I don't want you to be surprised by one and have a character unexpectedly go on short-term disability. Despite all these dangers though, the southern parts of the crags and the pits are the best place to establish a seafood restaurant, because you'll have wild crabs there and fishmen. Both of these roaming spawns pose a significant threat if you're unprepared. However, crabs do provide raw meat if defeated, while fishmen provide foul raw meat if you have hybrids or animals that need a snack. And you'll be needing as many snacks as you can get, so pack up those granola bars, because there isn't any fertility in these regions. You'll find ample water though, so hydroponics can be set up in order to farm. Funnily enough, some portions of the pits, specifically, will share the quirk that the Deadlands has. That being, you don't need to water hydroponic crops if they're placed on the roof of a building. This makes it very easy to grow food if you have hydroponic techs unlocked. On the subject of hydroponic farming, you'll likely want to bring some hemp or other biofuel source if you want to live in the pits or the crags, since wind levels can be inconsistent, sometimes even dropping down to zero miles per hour. In terms of other resources, these regions most notably have iron and copper veins which are superb and you'll find some of the best ore veins in the game here in fact once you get ore mines set up you'll feel like you're printing enough iron to rebound from a recession we'll get more into base recommendations later but just know that manufacturing plated armor chainmail, or robotics in these regions is an excellent idea with these fantastic copper and iron veins as you might have guessed, the pits and the crags do experience intermittent acid rain, 
So make sure if you have any fleshy characters that they're wearing some kind of acid protection. Since base defense is going to be crucial for settling in these zones, let's take a moment to discuss how you can use terrain to your advantage and how to set up viable defenses. Now at a glance, this piece of land we're looking at here doesn't look like much. It's not very flat. There are a lot of obstructions in the form of ore veins, but I wanna make a case for how you could use land like this to your advantage for defense. What's great about these kind of plateaus that have multiple levels is you can set up multiple lines of defense rather easily without having to build very many walls. And even though it looks like these ore veins would prevent you from building most structures, as you'll see here, there are multiple places where we could build a storm house. I understand that if you wanna build larger buildings, this kind of land would be inconducive for that. But one of the big things I learned living in these zones is that all you need is space for some watchtowers and some storm houses because these two building types don't take up much space. You don't need a lot of room to make them work. Storm houses and watchtowers are also quite versatile in that they can mount a good number of turrets on top of them for defense. If we take a look at the final base that I set up in the pits, you'll see that you'll see that I was able to use the tiered geography to my advantage. And this kind of setup is much more effective than having just one gate for your defense. Rather than having just one, I have this initial gate on the bottom tier, which mainly is just to slow down the attackers and give me time to notice that I'm being attacked. While the invaders are chipping away at this gate, they're gonna take a considerable amount of damage from these harpoons up top. And the time that this first gate will buy me will allow my characters on the lower tier to evacuate higher to the next level. On this next level, there is another gate with an even more formidable defensive setup. In order to get to the second gate, the attackers will have to funnel through this small area where there are turrets on watchtowers above. They're going to be doing an incredible amount of damage with the height advantage. Depending on how powerful the attackers are, I might even leave a few armored units or animals in front of the second gate to buy more time for the harpoons to start doing a whole lot of damage. For the sake of argument, let's say they get through this second gate. They're going to be in a very difficult situation because there are going to be multiple buildings with turrets up top that they're going to take fire from if they try to abduct, let's say, one of my characters. Each building also has a door that will be locked, and I made sure that the doors for these buildings have an overwatching harpoon, so the enemies will be taking fire as they try to break down the doors. If you'd like to set, set up a base like this one, there are plenty of locations in these regions that would allow for it. On this map here, I marked several locations that stood out to me. And I have to say, if you're willing to face the difficulty in these zones, you can set up an incredible base. There are plenty of flat locations and the quality of the copper and iron here enables you to essentially build factories for production. At this point, these zones have the best iron and copper I have seen in the game. If we take a step back to think about how dangerous things will be outside your base in these regions, there isn't a lot of room for error. But things are more forgiving here, you could say, in certain ways. For one, there aren't any big things or enemies that move super quickly. So as long as a character is unencumbered and has a little bit of athleticism training, they should be able to keep pace or outrun most enemies in these zones. Not all factions will abduct or eat your characters either. The Reavers will enslave you, which all things considered isn't the worst thing that could happen to you. And the only spawns that pose a lethal threat would be 
if you're abducted by fishmen or if an unconscious character is eaten by one of the animals. While neither of those outcomes are super likely, you are rolling the dice if you have a character that is KO'd and left unattended in these regions. This is where allying with the Crab Raiders becomes particularly useful too. If you ally with them, their traveling parties will come to your aid if you're in trouble, and there's a good chance they'll follow you around for an hour and protect your squad. Fighting alongside them has its own perks, of course, but keep in mind though, in terms of looting, if you want to hunt animals or take down opponents and other factions, Having crab raiders help you out can get you some free gear because a group of crab raiders, even without your assistance, is likely to stomp on other traveling factions. And even if you're not totally on board with crab ideology, you might want to ally with the crab raiders for economic reasons. Because unless you're planning to go to Katun or all the way to Black Scratch, the vendors in Crab Town are likely going to be the closest place where you can sell manufactured goods. And as delusional as they are, I do want to give an honorable mention to the skeleton bandits. Because for one, they're never going to send an organized attack to your base, which is nice. They also use sabers, which you'll primarily cut damage. Cut damage is easier to block than blunt damage, and you recover more quickly from cut damage. So if you're looking for a faction to train on for combat experience, skeleton bandits are a great way to do that. In general, the pits and the crags offer an exceptional opportunity to train your characters because most factions have high combat values. If you're smart about picking your fights here, it wouldn't be too crazy to have characters exceed combat level 60 after living in this region for some time. In comparison with other regions, there aren't many that I would consider to be more difficult than living here. The unwanted zone probably is easier than these regions. Fishman Island would still be more difficult if the King Gurgler is still alive say it would be more difficult. And while we haven't gone to Sonar's Dark or the Ashlands yet, I'd imagine those regions would probably be the only ones that would be more difficult than these three zones. So word to the wise, you're going to want to have experienced characters to settle here. You're going to want to have advanced techs like harpoons and hydroponics. I'd even say a minimum of 20 characters because to defend your base, you're going to have to have a good number of turret operators. Do these three regions have a niche though? Yes, they have a very clear niche. Excellent ore. The opportunity to fight alongside crab raiders and join the cause. And close proximity to some of the most difficult regions in the game. If you're looking to head into Sonar Stark or the Ashlands, for example. Let me know in the comments section below if... These zones are ones that you travel right through or if you've ever spent some time there to check things out. If you're looking for a region that is similar to this one but is a little bit closer to civilization, you might consider Stobes Garden. I'll add a link to that guide here for those interested. I will catch you all later. Stay frosty.